Tonight, we salute Cincinnati's marketing research genius and super salesman, Bon Vivant, we're told a great dancer, raconteur, family man, man about town, and a go-to problem solver. Anyone and everyone who has met him, even for the space of a few minutes, has become a friend of, and to, my special friend, Jack Brown. Jack Elliott Brown was born March 25, 1944, in Springfield, Ohio, the son of Rachel and Richard Brown. The family, which also included an older sister and brother, Carolyn and Dick, moved to Cincinnati in 1947, settling in the suburb of Valleydale. Jack attended the local elementary school and graduated from Woodward High School in 1962. It was during high school that Jack became a caddy at Wyoming Golf Club, which led to a lifelong passion for golf. Then, a part-time job at Schwally's Pharmacy excited his interest in consumer spending, which led him to attend University of Cincinnati Pharmacy College. Hard work has never scared Jack. During his college summers, he worked at a steel mill and blacktop driveways. During the school year, he worked as a sales clerk at Shillito's while going to night school. While at Beta Theta Pi fraternity party, he met his wife of over 44 years, Joanne Jennings. It took two and a half years of wowing her with his dancing, golf prowess, and jokes to seal the deal, one of his longest selling jobs. They married in January 1967. Jack and Joanne have three daughters, all living in Cincinnati, Shelley, Robin, and Katie, and nine grandchildren, all of whom affectionately call him Brownie. During his senior year, Jack couldn't wait to begin his career and left for a job as a field rep for Burgoyne Index, studying consumer habits. Jack was never known to be patient. While at Burgoyne, Jack's career really took off and he was soon transferred to New York City. After working there for three years, in 1970 he would return to Cincinnati after being invited by a good friend to become the senior partner and later president of a company called Market Audits, a marketing research firm. Early on, uh, Jack and I knew each other as friends, and I would say his greatest strength uh, was a propensity to find mischief, and he did a great job of that. And if that uh, were to define his future success, I'd say he'd excel at just about anything he did. In 1973, the firm was sold to Booz Allen and Hamilton, and he was elected a partner the following year. Now, there are some people who would say that from this point on, Jack really worked for the same company, only the names kept changing, while the focus became more and more refined. Now, I've had this chart made up to help us. In 1976, Jack was named president of Booz Allen and Hamilton's Marketing Services Group and included three marketing services companies, Market Audits, AdTel, and Basies. That same year, he was elected to the firm's board of directors, named to the executive cabinet, and made a senior partner, the youngest ever to achieve this distinction at age 29. It was said that the first time he tried to park in his new executive spot, the parking guard wouldn't let him in. In 1979, Burke International Research Corporation acquired the marketing service group. Jack was named president. That would last a year. Along with other executives, Jack would buy the company the following year and be named Chief Executive Officer of the renamed Burke Marketing Services, Inc., BMSI. One year later, Time, Inc. acquired the company, operating it as a joint venture, Sammy Burke. 1988, Control Data acquired Sammy Burke, and within a year, Jack would lead an employee buyback of the company, selling the Burke division, but keeping bases. Jack, one question. How did you ever keep track of what company you were working for at any given time? A common saying among long-term Basie's employees was, first we were out of booze, then out of time. Finally, out of control, but not to worry. Basie's was extremely successful, and after exponential growth, global expansion, and rapidly increasing revenues, 
The A.C. Nielsen Corporation took notice and acquired the company in 1998, retaining Jack as chairman. Um, I have to tell you, uh, I've been around a lot of big ideas, and I've been around a lot of business models that would suggest they were going to be successful, but this one has exceeded everybody's expectations. It certainly has exceeded mine. I know it's exceeded the business case that was used to justify the original acquisition, but maybe most importantly, it's probably even exceeded Jack's own vision for what this could be. He became a member of the A.C. Nielsen Policy and Planning Committee, a position reserved for only the top executives. Although there have been several changes at Nielsen, including a change in ownership and recently going public, Basie's continues to grow and remains a successful, key business and crucial product for Nielsen today. Jack retired from Nielsen in 2009. Uh, there was a golf course that was overgrown up in Michigan. Uh, nobody wanted to buy it. Jack put together a couple guys because he said Jack loves golf, but he said we'll take that course and we'll make it something. He found uh, a professional groundskeeper that he made his partner and today that golf course is one of the gems of northern Michigan. Jack is an entrepreneur plus. You should know that Jack's life hasn't been just about business. Throughout Jack's career, he was always dedicated and devoted to causes of the University of Cincinnati and the city of Cincinnati. Jack's community involvement on the boards of the Cincinnati Art Museum, Queen City Club Board of Governors, the Better Business Bureau and the UC Foundation, and the Greater Cincinnati Chamber of Commerce, where he was chairman, among others, gave back to his hometown. If Jack were on a baseball team, what position would he be? Well, he definitely would be the leadoff hitter. And he'd be a switch hitter, because he can handle anything that comes at him. And of course, he would steal a lot of bases. So, Jack Brown in a nutshell? Nope, there's still that private side of him. The dedicated family man, the avid golfer who likes to travel, is known for his love of hats and his Welsh Springer Spaniel, Stella. Jack's off-stated business philosophy has been, surround yourself with people smarter than you, point them in the right direction, and get out of their way. The only problem I find with that is, where do you look to find someone smarter than my close friend, Jack Brown?